Welcome to the Health Fix Podcast, where health junkies get their weekly fix of tips, tools, and techniques to have limitless energy, sharp minds, and fit physiques for life. Hey, health junkies. On this episode of the Health Fix Podcast, I have Cody Watkins on again for the second part of our two-part series here. Let me give you a little background on Cody. He was an out-of-shape high schooler who taught himself how to get into shape with powerlifting and bodybuilding. And he has now helped over 2,000 people achieve better lives through fitness. And in this episode, he's going to get into how he's testing for body fat, his favorite method, but he's also gonna talk about how he trains folks and what's happening on the inside. So he's kind of pulling back the curtain a little and showing you a little bit of what it's like to work with him. But not only that, one of the best parts of this episode is that we're talking about how to make fitness fun so that you actually incorporate it into your identity. It becomes part of you and it doesn't become a chore anymore. It becomes fun. So let's get into the podcast. I think the the biggest question that folks might be thinking right now, Cody, is, okay, we talked all about body fat. We talked all about plateaus and things. How, like, what's your favorite go-to for measuring body fat? Mm-hmm. Is it caliper? Sure. Is it the impedance? The in-bodies? Yeah. What, what is it? Yeah, I, I'm a, I owned a DEXA scan for four years. I'm a DEXA scan junkie. Like, if you can find a DEXA scan, there's going to be no body fat measure more accurate. I have done and tested just about every form of body fat test. So my, my top ones are DEXA scan. Then it's going to be hydrostatic. Hydrostatic, you got to get in the water in the basket way. So there's like a three-ish percent fluctuation rate because breathing all your air out underwater can be a little bit of a panic factor, right? So it, it, it skews. Yeah. The bod pods are inaccurate pieces of junk, in my opinion. So I went to, there was a clinic that had a bod pod. I had just hydrostatic at 8.2% body fat, literally two days before this. I have vascular across my abs. I've been doing this for years at this point, right? So they get me in. I come out of the bod pod at 14.4%, right? Now, again, I have vascularity on my abs. I'm like, hey, well, if it's congruent to itself, like, okay. And then I can use it at least for tracking, right? I'm like, hey, how does this measure? No one there could tell me how it works. They tried switching it to like African-American setting to see if the muscularity, the bone density settings would come. It was still 14.4, right? On the button. So then I start to realize it's basically pre-calibrated to some extent. There's a there's a basal formula in there, much like with the, the in-bodies. They have an algorithm in there based on weight. There's essentially a BMI formula built into the scale, Okay. So when you go into it, it's you take up X amount of volume per chamber. Well, if you're training for hypertrophy, I take up a lot more space than I typically weigh. So it reads me a higher percentage because of that. So like, although it may be accurate-ish to some, it's not. So DEXA, Hydra on the money or Hydro. Then if we go into in-bodies, they can be accurate. I've seen them match my DEXA scan. If that person is within the, the the weight realm that it's calibrated for. Mm. Meaning if you're on the high end or the low end, it will skew you. So if I go to do one, for instance, it'll put me like 18 to 20% body fat because I'm a 245 pound male at 5'10". So it automatically thinks ah, 245 at 5'10", he's got some fat on him. Now it does have a calibration. So it'll put me leaner than say a fat guy who weighs the same as me at my height, but it still won't put me anywhere near accurate. And and that's the problem. Now, if you're someone who's in the weight range, like uh, one of my former clients, I won't say her name on here, but she did, we were doing a show and she did the uh, in body. And then she came and immediately did my Dexas scan because I wanted to compare them. And because she was about five, 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 130, 35 pounds, getting ready for a show, she was within 0.2% of the Dexas. But she was in that weight range that in bodies read good. So for for a point of for a point of takeaway for your, your your listeners here, if you're like a 200 plus pound person, they'll be useful, but not necessarily accurate because you're out of that weight range. So don't get married to the numbers. Watch the trends, right? And also with those kind of things, they can skew drastically on hydration levels. So if you do one in the morning, dehydrate and all that muscle tissue is 80% fluid. Okay. So it's going to read you lean. When that lean reads less, it increases body fat. So always make sure you're hydrated, consistent time of, of testing. So do not test at night. If you test in the morning, 
Do not test in the morning if you test at night. Keep it consistent. And that'll give you the most frequent readout when it comes to it. And then you can use it as a point of reference. But realistically, you can visually gauge this stuff pretty well. And so like I've been, I've scanned so many people, seen so many percents. I can eyeball someone's percent and get it within 2% now. Like I, I've just seen that many bodies. You know, you, you start seeing thousands of people without their shirts. You, you know what percent start to look like when you've seen tests correlating. it. But my percentage of lean, if you're a lady and you're sub 15%, you're going to look, and there's going to be people questioning like, are you doing a show? Even though you're not stage ready, you're going to look enough. You're starting to get that response. A guy, if you're 12% or less, usually about the same when it comes to that. Those are the two variables that you want to watch, right? Now, visible abs are usually a cue for men. Ladies, more of like a flat stomach. If you start getting ab vascularity, like you might be lean enough, you're tripping your menstrual cycle, which is not how lean I am recommending to get. <laughs> just, just shy of the, the period uh, being irregular when it comes to that. But guys, if you can find a, a DEXA scan or you can find an uh, hydrostatic, those would be the two I'd recommend. Never do the bod pod. Never would be a recommendation of mine. Calipers, you have to have a consistent pincher so if there's like a trainer at the gym that can like he's pinched a million people he can do the same spot cool don't bug out on the percent it spits out track the millimeters if the millimeters are going down you're good it, it doesn't regardless of scale right now if you drop 10 pounds the millimeters barely move yeah you probably lost some muscle right that's not good so you can read it just like data in bodies are accurate within a certain space if you are outside that space they will be trending correctly but not necessarily accurate. So use it as kind of a reference point, not a tell-all be all. If you get a bad reading, make sure things were consistent. Don't beat yourself up and go on a burger binge, right? Just be like, hey, that could have been a bad reading. Let me measure this again in two, three weeks and see where it goes into. Makes sense. Makes sense. Wow. Lots, lots of info there. And, and yes, you know, the decks I think I've seen, you know, overall being kind of the most, most accurate on mine that embodies. Like, well, it's, it's the least invasive, right? So really you just lay on a table and it x-rays over you, right? It takes six minutes and you're done. And that's going to give you the most accurate. Now, if you're someone who doesn't want to do any of that, waist measurement with pictures are still my go-to. Mm -hmm. So if no one ever gains fat while their waist is going down, Right. You would have to have some like freakishly <laughs> weird storage pattern to pull that one. Off, right. So if you're measuring and the scale's not going down, scale's going up, but your waist is down, you know, a couple inches, ride that out. Your body's doing exactly what you want it to. If you drop 10 pounds and the waist went down a quarter inch, you might want to rethink what you're doing, unless maybe you had no fat left, left on your midsection because you're probably losing muscle. Right. And so that waist and weight loss should look pretty congruent when it comes to tr actually tracking it on a graph. Like I can watch all that stuff on my clients too. It's it's it pretty much parallel to on the down. Makes sense. Makes sense. So cool. So cool to think that stuff through. Um, definitely things that folks need some support in yeah. and, and understanding what to do and kind of taking some of the brain damage off um, of, of the individual and having someone yeah. else take over for it. And then you just kind of get in the flow. So... Yeah. I think my next question ends up being, I know you, you've mentioned before, you've worked, you work with folks online, you work one-on-one -on -one group, like what one-on-one, uh, -on -one, right? Like group, here's what I, I was going to ask you. Cause you, you said one-on-one, -on -one. um, does it seem that with one-on-ones you can get much more success than in groups? What's your opinion on that? Like what's your yeah, I'm not, a, I'm not a fan of group training. So group training kind of works like this. If you had a twin sister, identical twin, identical goals, I could group train you because you're the same person. Now, this isn't to say that I couldn't train two people, but what's going to happen. So like my wife and I work out together. Okay. My wife is half my size. Now we obviously have different goals, right? But we can still work out together. But my workouts will get sacrificed to make her workouts better. And since I'm at a point of maintaining, it doesn't really bother me, right? So we do the workout where it's like, ah, I can check as much as I need to to maintain, but it still has the right intensity, volume, and everything that we need to move the needle with her physique, right? Because she's still got goals she wants to check. And so same thing happens if you're going in group. So if I have like a high level achiever and I got a like an intro level person, I have to cater that workout one way or the other. And so if I cater it to the advanced person, this person's going to fall out. They're never going to be able to do it. 
And if I cater it to the less intense person, this person's never going to get a good workout, right? So they're either going to have to go on their own and try to crank intensity, which at that point, I think it kind of defeats the purpose of hiring me as a coach when it comes to it. Now, the workout portions, right? Those can be pretty similar, but the nutrition will vary drastically. So if you're getting coaching and they're only doing workouts, yeah, you guys might get some great workouts that are intense, but if nutrition is 90% of the needle, how much of that are they leaving on the table in terms of results? And so personally, I've never found great success with it. I, I don't, honestly, I don't see how it could be successful to the level, to the standard I like to be successful, right? Will, will it work? Sure. But I like results that drop people's jaw to the floor. Right? <laughs> I don't like the ones that are like, oh yeah, she got in a little better shape in six months. I like the ones that are like, oh my God, you did that in six months? Like, yeah, that, that's way more fun. So to do that, you've got to take that individual because the things holding you back from getting your results are so much different than your friends or, you know, even someone of the different gender or different age, anything like that, that you can't prioritize both people. Yeah. And you'll see it like this is uh, back when I did personal training at 24 hour fitness, this would have been what, 17, 18 years ago, something like that. Right. You could watch the stress getting out. And then you watch group instructors and they walk around holding stopwatch. Yeah, you're doing great, Cindy. Keep it up. Yeah. yeah 10 more seconds. And so they, the group training really relies on a lot more personal perception of intensity, right? Because that person is now having to push because they're, they're not getting pushed from the coach. And the plan is going to be discretionally writ based on who it's for, right? So if you have a way, yeah, it can be more cost effective. But is it cost effective if it gets you less of a result? And I and personally with me, I don't think so. Right. I would rather spend more money to get the result I'm after than spend less money, more time, and kind of a result similar to what I would have wanted. Makes sense. Makes sense. Yeah, I wanted to ask that because you know, a lot of folks are trending towards group training now and group programs for weight loss and group this yeah. and group that. And and it's one of my things that I don't I've tried it, I don't like it. Or no, the success like, rate's really, really low with it. So you'll get like the one or two rock stars that like they, they'll be good at anything they do, but for the most part, it's not a high level of success. And again, it's just it's kind of like on the, the value equation. That's why if you go to a bigger gym that's running group classes, like there's the one or two ladies in the front row that are doing really good, and everyone else, you can't even tell that they do group classes. Right. And so that's where I see group as. So if you have the ability to do one-on-one, -on -one, you're really going to shine with it. If it's group, hopefully they have some individual approach to it where they at least in, on the nutritional aspect, don't do some cookie cutter nonsense and do a little bit deeper dive on that aspect of it for you guys. And then the workouts are a little bit more kind of grouped in and that can be okay. But if it's just group, like, hey, here's a meal plan group. Hey, here's a workout. I I'm afraid you're probably going to get more of a bad taste in your mouth from a poor experience than you will good results coming out of it. Makes sense. It makes sense. And so if someone's working with you, how does it look in terms of when do they meet up with you? You know, how does, how does it work for the nutrition? How does it work for all that? So I'm annoying. I'm kind of on them quite a bit. <laughs> so the thing I like to think of is when somebody hires me, they're not hiring me to figure this stuff out on them. Right. So I want a million questions that first week. Like if I, if my phone's not going, zzz, 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 I'm going to be like, hey, <laughs> does everything make sense? Because there's so much nuance that comes with it and so many things that you may think are normal that aren't normal, right? And like TMI, but I'll get clients to be like, hey, what can I do? I haven't pooped all week. I'm like, homie, it's been seven days. Like you, you mm -hmm. didn't think like one day to tell me this? Like, <laughs> you, you're like now we're in danger condition. Like we got to do a big fix when it comes to this. So, okay. You're like, Hey, how you like drinking Epsom salt? They're like, what do you mean drinking Epsom salt? I'm like, well, you read the label. It's a laxative works really good. And then we can adjust your magnesium dosing and get it fixed. Right. Likewise, when people have a little eye twitch throughout the day, that's not something you think to like, Oh, Hey, but it's a magnesium deficiency. So mm -hmm. we throw in some magnesium taurate, magnesium orotate, either one, we crank that up, your, your eye twitch will be gone, right? We can have that problem fixed in, in three minutes, right? So super, super easy. But again, like if I don't know this stuff, so sometimes I got to pull it out. Other times they'll spit it out, but the communication has to be thorough with it, right? So we'll do text communication right through my app and stuff. That's usually the, the best means of it. 
Um, but with that, I do Zooms with my clients weekly and or as needed, right? So like I, if maybe you schedule one on Friday and some things are just easier to hash out on a call, right? <laughs> like if you're like, dude, I can't understand this. Okay, cool. I'll either record like a screen record and show you through it. We'll hop on a quick call and dive in. But I don't like to leave people to solve for problems because it doesn't work out really well. I, I know that as we get more into it, the, usually the touch points become less frequent, right? Usually every couple of weeks when it comes to that and then communicating more through text. But basically it is individual to the client because some people need a little bit more nurture it, right? And other people are like, I got this, man. I'm like, I'm like a machine. And so once we have that in, but I do everything when it comes to it. So, because again, the point of you hiring me isn't for me to write down three numbers on a piece of paper and go, oh, here's your nutrition plan. Like, that's bullshit. Like, that's not a plan. You wrote down three numbers based arbitrarily on nothing. And that's not going to get some of their goals. So I'll have a little bit of homework for the people. I haven't logged out their food for one or two days. I like to see what normal is. So I'll usually get yesterday and then the day we're talking. Because after we talk, right, they automatically clean it up. There's chicken, yeah. rice, broccoli, and all that stuff in there, right? I want to see like exactly. the pizza, the taquitos, the tequila, right? I want to see all the stuff that you shouldn't have that's in there. And so then I have an idea of what normal is. So then I can go through and put together a custom meal plan based on their eating habits, their food preferences, their lifestyle. So now they know every meal, what to eat, every meal has macros. Beyond that, I'll do food swap sheets. And they're more than welcome to switch to macros. If they don't understand it, cool. All they have to be like is like, hey, dude, I'm day three turkey sandwich. And if I have to eat one more bite, I'm going to yak. Cool. What sounds good to you? And then I can start putting together food swaps that work more with that. We can keep it as simple or as complicated as they like, right? So I got some people that are like, oh, I love to cook. Cool. We'll, we'll put food you can actually cook in there. I got other people like, dude, I want a Costco list. Like you, you said you don't cook. I'm like, yes, I do. <laughs> so I can send a cheat sheet to Costco where we have all the pre-made meals there that are A, healthy. They got organic type ones, high protein, low calorie. So now all you got to do is put something in the microwave for three minutes and have a deal uh, dinner for the family. So you're not going out to eat but also didn't overly consume time, right? Because we want to keep this stuff simple and have it be working. So once we go through that, then we do a dive into the, the obviously the weight training structure of it because that's the next component. I need to make sure that it's functional for what your goal is and your schedule, right? So if you're working out zero times a week, you're like, Cody, I can train six. Cool, we'll start with three, right? I don't listen to you. <laughs> I listen to what the results need. <laughs> and, uh, the reason you hired me isn't because you necessarily know what you're doing. Right. It's because we need help figuring it out, right? So I will, uh, cool, if six is really what you want, we will get to that, but we will never start there, right? Let's ramp this up. Then we'll make sure we're doing everything right there when it comes to the training. So tracking reps, tracking weight, rating intensity of the workouts. I can see all that data. My, my system will sync up to Apple Watch, Fitbit, any of that stuff. So like I can see all the steps, the sleep, the heart rate. So I can see food log, strength, everything in graphs and charts. I get notifications of people miss workouts. So I can be like, hey, <laughs> I see something missing here so I can be extra creepy. And then that's where the coaching comes in, making sure we have the touch points, the check-in communication. So I have data on what your experience is like so far. So, you know, when I do this stuff, I have a 90% success rate with clients. So it's like, I can pick a name out of a hat and it works out really, really good. Um, huh. You know, I just, there, there's a 10% I haven't fixed, but it's usually because they're not doing what I told them, right? Not because they're doing what they say, but I, I do a money back guarantee on my service, right? So like if anyone comes in, I'll write you a check back if it doesn't work, right? It's provided you did 80% of what right. I did. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, that makes sense. That makes yeah. sense. Hey, health junkies. Jake and Steph from Troop Functional Mushrooms have given you a little gift for listening to this podcast. If you enter Health Fix 20, you can get 20% off your order of Troop Functional Mushrooms. All right, let's get back to the podcast. And even for like, you know, one of the biggest things I get in terms of questions is like, is Cody, you know, able to help folks who travel a lot for work oh, yeah. you know, and things like that? You know, is, is he able to manage, you know, figuring that yeah. out for folks? Well, so with this too, I think people overcomplicate what traveling actually is, right? So all it is, is you need convenient foods, whether they're packable or to eat. So cool. Like what does every airport have? They all have fast food restaurants. So if you had a list of six different meals you could do for a lunch in an airport that you could get at KFC, Chick-fil-A, Burger King, McDonald's. Now, is it the healthiest? No. But if it hits our numbers, we're not going to come out worse for wear, right? So we have kind of like the oh shit strategy in there for those situations. Hotel gyms? Cool. We got, we got gyms at most of them. And all people have to do is so like I can put them together generally. But really what I like to do is when people travel, I'll have them do a video as soon as they get to the hotel, just snap a few pictures of the equipment. And then I'll build the workout out specific to that. So then they don't have an excuse, right? It's built for that specific gym, right? Cool. 
Now they can knock that out, get it done. Now we have that taken care of. Um, so we have those. In worst case scenario, you don't start losing muscle, even if you had a week off, as long as the nutrition's in check. It takes like three weeks to start dumping tissue. So the traveling is actually easy when you break it down to the blocks. I think most people just look at it like it's so much, but like you can get protein bars to the airport. You can pack protein powder through the airport. So like when I travel, I, I do like six meals a day of protein shakes, right? So I literally look like a, a, a chocolate protein drug dealer, right? Going through there, like half my bag in Ziplocs, right? They got to bomb test it sometimes yeah. and all that stuff, but it's, <laughs> it's super, super doable. And like, if you know the hotel you're going to, you can call them and be like, Hey, my name's Steve. I have a reservation on whatever 315. Can I Amazon this to the hotel and you hold it for me? Yeah. And you can Amazon it to the address of the hotel and have whatever from your proteins waiting for you while you're traveling, right? So it's just being preemptive with it rather than, you know, you got to be responsive, not reactive. And so when we have a plan in play, we can we can have responses rather than reactions. And that's where you can keep results going no matter what. Because I, I'd say probably 20% of the people we work with travel, right? So and so you have to have a solution. You can't just go, well... <laughs> No fitness this week. I'm off. I'm off. I'm off traveling. Right? Like that'll never last. So we gotta have solutions that'll work for those situations. And once you have those in play, I think it's a lot simpler than people think once they actually put it in action. Yeah, for sure, for sure. I mean, I, I'm probably out of my house at least two two weeks out of each month with travel. Yeah. While I wish that I had more, you know, weight situation, you know, to work with and, and yeah. at least a Smith machine in a hotel, sometimes it doesn't happen, yeah. Yeah. but I feel like I've done okay, but that yeah. is somewhat where I also kind of wonder like, hmm, yeah. what else we do? So, well, and the other thing too, you can do with that though, if you're someone who does travel frequent, grab like one of the TRX trainers and they'll fold up in your bag about this big. And worst case, you can put it in the door jam of your hotel room and do some workouts with there to get some resistance training. Best case, okay, you get down to the gym. They do have a Smith machine or a cable tower. You can attach it on there. Now you can do all the weights, TRX stuff, and cable work. And you can do a full badass workout just with that right there. And so, again, it's more, you got to be more solutions oriented when it comes to this stuff. And think, how can I not, ooh, I can't do this. And once you do that, that's that shift. And this stuff goes so much smoother once we do that. Absolutely. I agree. I agree. I, I've rigged together some crazy stuff. Yeah. Um, and I'm just looking, I don't have them in here, my bands. Those yeah. are also another thing that are easy yeah. to travel with. And, yep. you know, you can rock that. Well, too. and the other thing too, from, from this perspective, remember like nutrition is 90% of our leverage. So I think people overemphasize the workout. So if you miss a workout, like you're not traveling super frequent, it's like once every two or three months, you're going to be gone for like a week or so. Cool. Not a big deal. That's not going to set you back, right? Just mind the food. Now, if you're someone like you and it's like, okay, two weeks every month. Yeah. That's, that's going to be hard to make progress if you don't have a solution in there. So that's where you'd want to plug and play a strategy that's going to work rather than panic about it, right? The the people that are infrequently traveling like four days a, a week here and there, <laughs> just, just mind your food, right? Like as long as you, you do that. And then if you, you know, if you have social outings, company outings, do, do what I call protein backloading. So basically you just eat protein for all your other meals. So you save those calories for dinner. So even if you go above and beyond at the restaurant, you're not gonna look like some weirdo bringing chicken rice and broccoli to the dinner table, right? From your work colleagues, you look normal and just be mindful of your choices, right? Like note, cheesecake is like a thousand calories a slice, maybe opt out of dessert and just do a bigger steak, fries, potatoes. But since you save those calories earlier, even if you did go above and beyond, pound of fat's 3,500 calories. So unless you ate like, 5,500 calories at your work dinner, you're not going to put on a pound. So you, you you will be okay if you if you break it down to the basics. Oh my God. Yeah, it's so funny, you know, and I think for a lot of people, it's inflammation weight, you know, the seed oils, the whatever they might be, might irritate them at the restaurant. And that's where they're like, oh my God, I, you know, I ate out once and I gained eight pounds. <laughs> yeah, no, gaining fat actually takes a lot more than people think. Now, fluctuating weight that's a different animal. And so anytime you get a quick fluctuation, like I said, you could have slept less, got something digested wrong. Maybe your bowel movements are a little bit slower. Your water intake was low. Any of those things can make you hang on to fluid. And so, you know, get your water intake back up, give it two or three days, 
you're going to feel like you have to pee 65 more times. Cool. The water weight's coming off. Now we know that scale should be back down. That's when you peek at it, make sure it's back to like your range where you like to see it. Oh man. So, I mean, so much stuff that it's funny how we get in our heads and it's funny how we like instantly are like, oh my God, it's this. Yeah. <sighs> so fun. Well, and it's, it's picture too. Cause I, you know, I, I have, I work with some coaches in this industry too, because like, like you said, it's like coaching yourself was challenging. Yeah. And so one of them, she'll, she'll do some uh, filming and stuff with me too. She's actually semi-local to my area, but uh, you know, she put like her starting picture, not with me, but before she started on her fitness journey up to like the new muscular build. Right. And she's like, I finally see it now. And I'm like, that's like a, that's like the moment, right? Like that's like a coach's best moment because we're trying to tell you this the whole time. And you, you know, and then one day you're like, Oh my God, I do look good. I'm like, there it is. <laughs> That's what we've been shooting for, right? But it's a it's a great moment when it actually happens, right? It just I wish that one would happen a little bit more, right? When people finally see the the fruits of their labor, you know. Yeah. No, it's it's hard. It's hard. I mean, I had an aha moment just now when I came back from the Caymans when when we took some pictures of me in a swimsuit. And normally I'm like, no, yeah. not right now. I'm still, you know. I'm bloated. bloated. I just ate <laughs> whatever the excuse I'm is. bloated. I just ate. I've been, you know, I've had drinks like, yeah. Mm, yeah. you know, and I was like, huh, yeah. I'm actually going to post this on Instagram. It's <laughs> not even that bad. I'm like, this isn't, this is cool. And like, you know, I, I, I don't know if I've even mentioned this on, on the podcast. That, like I'm coming back from being very burnt out with my business and, and like literally letting myself kind of go because I was trying to take care of everything else. And so seeing that, I was like, whoa, yeah. all right. I'm well, getting well, it back. Well, you get, you just get buried in the weeds. Right. And then other things start to slip, you know, and you got to put it all together because like it, you can be hyper successful at everything else, but if you don't have your, you know, your health and you don't love the body you're in, like there's a problem with that situation. One of your key pillars is missing and there's not a solid foundation when that's not there. Yeah. And it's crazy, you know, how for a lot of women, this yeah. is something that will kind of catch up to us. And yeah. especially women who have been active and fit their whole life and still kind of maintain a, a level of fitness, yeah. but they decrease the intensity. They're trying to sneak in workouts, you know, and then diet goes to shit because yeah. they haven't ate all day. And they're like, oh crap, I better eat something. Yeah. That's. Yeah. They start getting the, the metabolism like that. And then the other thing too, especially if they're like parents, it's the snacking on the kids' foods, right? Like a handful for thee and a handful for me. <laughs> and then you're like, no, I hardly ate today. I'm like, you've ate six handfuls of goldfish since you've been babysitting. <laughs> so there's little things to watch for. And I think that conversation is one to have with yourself about just being brutally honest, because we will delete things out of our head that actually happens. So we feel good. And the thing is, I, I do want everyone to feel good, but more so I want you all not to feel good. And you're like, well, what the hell? What do you mean? But discomfort is a state of growth. Yeah. And so if you change your situation to feel comfortable, but you're not actually comfortable, you just change the situation. Like, okay, you got fatter friends because you felt uncomfortable around fit people. Did that actually make you better? No, it didn't. So let's get uncomfortable with the fact you don't like where you're at. So then we can do something about it to take initiative, take ownership to actually do it. So there's two ways to have the tallest building in the city, right? You can destroy everyone else's. Or you can build yours up bigger, right? <laughs> and there's only one path that's got good morals to it, right? And so building yours bigger, it takes work, right? So instead of maybe looking at people that are doing better, like, well, Cindy over there, she got Joe work so she could just be a stay-at-home mom. I have to work and be a mom and do this. Cool. But guess who's going to own it more when they get there? Like you put so much more work in than her by the time you get there, like, You'll be more, much more proud of the body when you actually get to it, right? So don't look at it like an excuse. Look at it like changing the perspective. I'm like, okay, I can conquer this. And that goes a long ways when it comes to this stuff. Absolutely. Absolutely. What you say, what you think, you know, your, your attitude is incredibly important. There's a study and you can Google it. It'll pull it up, but it's uh, called Mindset Matters. And they did it for weight loss. And I'll paraphrase the numbers in it, right? But they took a group of like hotel cleaners, like maids. 
And they took half the group and they told them, hey, what you do fits the national exercise accreditation for being healthy. And they took the other half and didn't tell me. Anything. <laughs> the group that they told them that their basically their daily activities was healthy and it was enough exercise. They lost like six pounds over the next 12 weeks versus the group that didn't tell anything lost zero. So you can say causation or correlation. But what it was, was maybe they started being more mindful because they're like, well, if I'm already this healthy, maybe I'll have an apple instead of a cookie, right? Maybe it was just a little change, but regardless, it worked. So if you're sitting there going in telling yourself you can't, it doesn't work, my schedule's too busy, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, maybe you're one of the high points of resistance to actually achieving your goals. And if you looked at it like, yeah, I can actually do this, imagine what doors would open for you moving forward. Hmm. So huge. <laughs> I wow. send that study out to people if they start getting <laughs> a little in a funk. Oh, you know, but I've seen it working with so many people. Like you'll watch the negativity crank up. Yeah. And you'll watch the scale stop. Yep. And I literally have to have them start journaling, writing stuff down, writing goals down because they will halt their fat loss, whether it's indirectly or directly. It's causation or correlation. But maybe you think that you can't lose weight. So you're subtly sub-sabotaging yourself throughout the day and you don't even know it. Mm -hmm. Or maybe you're setting everything, cortisol levels getting high. You're just not optimizing the body by doing so. So it's never going to hurt to think like, yeah, I can definitely do this. Yeah, I can definitely do or start losing weight. It's going to feel like you're BSing yourself when you first start telling yourself that, right? It's not going to feel honest, but you do it long enough, your brain's eventually going to give in. It's going to be, duh, Shannon will not shut up about reaching this goal. Like, dude, maybe we just got to reach the goal and shut her up because she's really annoying. Like every day pushing this down my throat and she don't weigh 150. She's 170 right now. And it's really annoying her saying I weigh 150. And then the brain's like, okay, yeah, well, let's just get her a little bit closer and shut her up, right? And then all of a sudden you start getting wins, right? So that's like the mental contundrum people go through when it comes to this, but you got to conquer the mind, right? Once you do that, all this other stuff gets a lot easier. So huge. So huge. Oh my goodness. So many things, Cody, so many things, <laughs> but the mind, the mind is a huge one. And, and I'm glad that you mentioned that. And I'm glad you work with folks on that because they do see the same thing when folks start telling themselves and I'm never going to lose weight or they sit down in my, in the chair across from me and they're like, I've never been able to lose weight ever and this and that. And it's like, well, that, that may be your number one problem. Yeah. yeah. Well, and the other thing too, like you'll see it a lot on consults. So you'll say like, so what have, what all have you tried to lose weight? And they go, oh, I've tried everything. Okay, cool. But then if I actually start breaking down, they've tried like eh, one thing for three days, right? They haven't actually tried anything with substance. And because the things that they thought to try were so extreme, right? So again, if they would work, go out and order a Diet Coke instead of a Coke and they lose two pounds a week, do you think that's really that hard to do? Probably not, right? But for most people, it would give them such a big win, they could find motivation to keep moving forward. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. But the little things are often neglected when it comes to this. It, it's true. It's true. And over and, and that's what, you know, really got me when we first had our inter, our, fir, our first podcast interview, because I was like, yeah, it's the little things in it. And we do overlook a lot of that. And we do try to strive to be like so perfect on everything and don't think about the little upgrades. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And then once you put those in, that's where you get the biggest, biggest outputs to the smallest inputs. So it's like the, the most reward comes from the littlest key levers of movement. And if you can do that, like it's really hard to lose when it feels like you're not working to get the result. Like if you, if you just walked into work and they're like, hey, here's a bonus. You're not gonna be like, whoa, I didn't earn this. So like, if you could get that out of your fitness, you'd be like, all right. Like, I guess I could keep doing this fitness stuff. That doesn't feel too bad. Like, okay, cool. And that's the kind of stuff you have to stack forward guys. And if you can do that, like you will find a level of success you have never dreamt of because it doesn't feel like work. And that's the name of the game. Uh, absolutely. Absolutely. Gosh. Well, I don't, I don't get, I don't, get a, I don't wake up and think, oh, how can I be fit today? <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> okay, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. Right. That's it. It's, it's thoughtless at this point. It's just automation. So it, it doesn't matter at this point. Right. It's so part of your identity. You're like, this is what it, the other things I do. This is what I do. Yep. Mm -hmm. yeah, it becomes who you are, right? And that's the strongest force in human nature, right? So if like, like you said, if they sit in the chair and they identify as someone who can't lose weight, well, the, the body and the brain are going to go do everything they possibly can to not lose weight. So you can't build the strength around the thing opposing the goal that you want to get to.
you have to do it in reverse, right? And so it starts with obviously you. And if you're coming into a place or on a console, like you probably are somewhere where you're at least taking the first step to do something for yourself, right? So kudos, good to you. Most are good for you. Most people don't even take that step, right? They'll they'll sit there and linger, watch on Instagram for a couple of years, right? It's like, man, if you would have just talked to me six months ago when you started creeping, like, man, imagine how we look right now. And they're like, yeah, but <laughs> so. Uh, so Note in any of you creeping, just send the message, right? Like we we don't always know you're there, like but there there is help. <laughs> there is, and I mean you make you make fitness so much fun, and like I started off, you know the the podcast of you know just having fun and playing around yeah. on Instagram and and the memes. I mean we just gotta lighten up a little bit with this and just have fun and make it be part of our identity and and make it tailored to us and what's fun to us. Oh yeah, cool. well, I mean, you'll see it up in the gym. There's so many like bodybuilder guys. They go up there to, like try to be as pissed off as they can while they're training. I'm like, man, like you're so angry right now. And I'll say it's like I'll have fun in between sets, right? For like that for that 15 seconds, I got to move the weight, or I got to put on my serious face. But past that, it's not it's not time to be angry, you know. <laughs> I mean, you see the guys like doing boxing moves to like you know oh, yeah. themselves up, and you're like, really? Oh, they got the hood on, the headphones in there. <laughs> I'm like man you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna blow a vein in that head you're so angry right now like you gotta take it two steps down tiger like yeah be intense for the lift but yeesh <laughs> oh, you're scaring you're scaring everybody your energy is scaring me <laughs> yeah that's, that's very dark right and so but yeah there, there's just different ways to do it but when people finally put it all together right and they start seeing progress that's that's where the beauty's at because i think it is much simpler than people think it's not easy but it's simpler and if it can be simple inputs, anyone can do it, right? But it's just having having it broke down for you where it's just bite by bite so you're not choking on it. That's really where coaches are going to shine to help you reach your goal because there's so much information out there. You're going to you're, you're gonna start choking on keto, choking on carnivore, choking on intermittent fasting. You're choking on the first thing that comes your way because there's so much to it versus somebody else is like, have a Diet Coke. You're like, but I need to do more. I'm like, if that's getting you two pounds a week of fat loss, I do not think you need to do more yet. <laughs> Step one. Yep. We, we, yep. we just exactly. jump over the easy. I think, I think we just think that fitness has to be hard. I think right. that's because that's what we've, you know. Well, it, it, it helps the narrative though, because if we convince ourselves it has to be hard, it's easy to say, well, it's hard. That's why I'm not fit. And so it's, it justifies where it's where your current state of life is. And that doesn't mean it's right because really fitness, like I work out three hours a week, <laughs> you know, like that's not a lot of time. And so, and my meal, cause like I drink most of my food. So like, I don't even spend that much time eating, prepping, like everything's pre-made from Costco, right? Like I cook like two meals a week. So like my total time consumption for being fit is, seven hours including chewing time you know it's not super lengthy wow. and so i don't think it takes as much work as people think now it will take more work to get there but maintenance when you do this stuff right is so unbelievably easy that you will wish that you will wish you still had a goal <laughs> wow so inspiring so inspiring i think a lot of folks will be like sign me up Sign me up. So let's let's tell folks how they hook up with you. How do you, how does it work? What do they do? So if you're someone who's interested, uh, DM me on Instagram. So just DM me Coach Thirty Three if you're interested in getting getting started. Or and we're not going to push it down your throat, right? Let's make sure you're a fit for what I do. And if we are cool, I'll go through everything with you. But like I said, if you're out there, you're feeling stuck. There's a path to success, right? So you send me Coach Thirty Three on Instagram. Facebook at Cody Watkins Fitness, pretty easy to find on there. Um, I can carve out the path for success. Basically, when I bring someone on, we go through a consult call, that's free. If what I do is a fit, I'd love to have you on board. If not, you're gonna learn everything about what we would do to start you out. So you're gonna come out with some good information regardless. And we shake hands on the internet and part our way as friends, right? I'm not pushing anything down anyone's throat. I only want people on my team that want to be there. And if you're not someone who wants to be there, I'm not going to force you to slide your card, right? That's not for me. <laughs> no, no, no. 
Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh my goodness. All right. So we're going to put that in to the podcast notes, of course, folks, on how you can reach Cody on Instagram and it's coach 33, correct? I got that. All right. DMing coach 33. We'll write that down. Yeah. Good stuff here. I'm sure I'm going to find more topics over time <laughs> yeah. to, to chat with you because it's just so much fun to, to hash out all these things. And as the questions come in, I will throw some more your way and we'll bring you back on here in a little bit and, and just keep helping folks find their fitness. Absolutely. Sounds great. Hey, fellow health junkie. Thanks for listening to the Health Fix podcast. If you